the Battle of Elchingen, fought on 14 October 1805, saw French forces under Michel Ney rout an Austrian corps led by Johann Sigismund Reich. This defeat led to a large part of the Austrian army being invested in the fortress of Ulm by the army of Emperor Napoleon I of France while other formations fled to the east. Soon afterward, the Austrians trapped in Ulm surrendered and the French mopped up most of the remaining Austrians' forces, bringing the Ulm campaign to a close. While the Austrian army lay near Ulm, south of the Danube River, the French army marched west on the north side of the river. Then Napoleon's troops crossed the river east of Ulm, cutting the Austrian retreat route to Vienna. Finally waking up to his danger, Mack tried to break out on the north side of the river, but a lone French division blocked his first attempt. Realizing that his enemies might escape the trap, Napoleon ordered Ney to cross to the north bank of the river. Ney's larger corps attacked Riche's corps at Elchingen on the north bank. The French captured the heights and drove the Austrian soldiers west toward Ulm, forcing many of them to surrender, while a body of Austrians remained at large on the north bank. The near destruction of Riche's command meant that the bulk of Mack's army was hopelessly surrounded in Ulm. Background. On 8 September, the army of Feldmarschall Lieutenant Karl Mack and Feldmarschall Lieutenant Archduke Ferdinand of Austria s crossed the Inn River and invaded the electorate of Bavaria. Mack planned to establish 88 battalions and 148 squadrons on the Lech River near Augsburg by the end of October, though called upon to join Austria against France. Elector Maximilian IV Joseph of Bavaria instead withdrew his army north to the main river in accordance with his secret alliance with France. By 12 September when the Austrians occupied Munich, Mack changed his mind and discarded his earlier plan. He decided to concentrate his army farther west on the Illa River so he could counterattack any French invasion coming through the Black Forest. As part of his new strategy, Feldmarschall Lieutenant Franjo Jelacic was ordered to move from Feldmarschall Lieutenant Archduke John's Army of the Tyrol to Lake Constance. Mack expected to have 50,000 to 55,000 troops in position near Ulm by the end of September. Jelacic would hold the left flank with 11,000 soldiers while Feldmarschall Lieutenant Michael von Kajanmeer 12,000 man corps watched the Bavarians from Ingolstadt. However, the change of plans threw the Austrian army's supply system into disarray. As the weather turned bad, sickness and desertion began to diminish the army's numbers. The nominal army commander, Archduke Ferdinand and Max Chief of Staff General Major Anton Mayer von Heldensfeld both insisted that the army halt at the Lechers originally planned. By the end of September, relations between Mack and Ferdinand became so poor that all communication between the two was done in writing. Ferdinand and Mayer appealed to Emperor Francis II. The emperor sought the advice of Feldmarschall Archduke Charles, who commanded the Army of Italy, and was warned that Mack was making a strategic blunder. Even so, the emperor backed Mack to the hilt and relieved Mayer of his post. Mack's army began to assemble on the Illa. On 24 and 25 September, Napoleon launched the Grand Aarme Acut across the Rhine River to open the Ulm campaign, while Marshal Joachim Marat's cavalry corps and Marshal John Lanz's V Corps advanced directly east toward Ulm. The bulk of Napoleon's army passed to the north of the Austrian army. Marshal Jean-Baptiste Bernadotte's 1st Corps, General of Division August Marmont's 2nd Corps, Marshal Louis Davout's 3rd Corps, Marshal Nicolas Salt's 4th Corps, and Marshal Nee's 6th Corps wheeled east, then southeast, then south. On 5 October, Cayenne Mayer reported that the French were in Ansbach, to the north of the Danube. Two days later, the French crossed the Danube on a broad front, moving south. 
At this time Mack's army was divided into four corps. Jelasic had 15,000 troops in 16 infantry battalions, six Jaeger companies, and six cavalry squadrons to the south of Ulm. Feldmarshal Lieutenant Karl Philipp, Prince of Schwarzenberg, commanded 28 battalions and 30 squadrons at Ulm. Feldmarshal Lieutenant Franz von Wernick had 30 battalions and 24 squadrons near Gunsberg. Kian Mayer's command near Ingolstadt consisted of 19 battalions and 34 squadrons. Unwisely, Mack decided to defend Ulm, instead of trying to escape the approaching French army. Mack reacted by sending Feldmarshal Lieutenant Franz Xavier Offenberg with only 6,000 men to stop the French. Murat and Lana crushed the hapless Offenberg at the Battle of Wörtingen, inflicting losses of 400 killed and wounded on the Austrians and capturing 2,900 soldiers and six cannons. The next day, General of Division Jean-Pierre Fermin Maler's 6th Corps Division attacked General Major Constantin Gillian Karl Despray's 7,000 troops in the Battle of Gunsberg. The Austrians suffered 2,000 casualties while the French lost 700 soldiers. Napoleon placed Davout and Bernadotte at Munich to guard against General Mikhail Kutuzov's Russian army and Kian Mayer's troops. The Emperor sent Salt west to Memmingen, south of Ulm. Murat, Lannis, Ney, Marmont, and the Imperial Guard moved directly west toward Ulm. At this time, Ney's corps was still on the north bank. On the 11th of October, when Murat ordered Ney to bring his corps to the south bank, Ney furiously protested but was overruled. In consequence, Mack and Prince Schwarzenberg with 25,000 troops fell upon General of Division Pierre Dupont's solitary division in the Battle of Haslach Jungjingen. That day, Dupont's 5,350 infantry Supported by General of Division Jacques-Louis François de Lais de Italy's 2,169 cavalry fought the Austrians to a standstill. Dupont's force was mauled, losing 2,400 casualties, plus 11 guns and two eagles captured. Austrian losses numbered 4,100 killed, wounded, and captured. More important, Mack was wounded in the fight and with his force. Tamely returned to Ulm that night. On 12 October Mack reorganized his army into four corps under Schwarzenberg, Werneck, Jelasak, and Feldmarschall Lieutenant Riesch. The units were organized similar to the French corps, except that Mack constantly shuffled the component units. That day, Mack issued a flurry of orders, each set countermanding the previous instructions. In sum, he ordered Jelasic to march south to the Tyrol, Schwarzenberg to hold Ulm, and Werneck to move to Heidenheim and Erbrenz followed by General Major Johann Ludwig Alexius von Laudens' division of Riesch's corps. This was followed by a council of war at which Mack decided to send Riesch along the Danube to destroy all the bridges. In one speculative account, the real reason Mack sent Jelasic to the Tyrol was to get rid of Mayer, who led a brigade. Historian Frederick Kagan surmised that Mack was either confused or he deliberately scattered his army to give it a better chance to escape. In any case, Mack soon issued a new set of orders which were similar to the last set. Riesch set out with his command on the 13th, marching on waterlogged roads in the direction of Elchingen. On 13 October several French corps marched west on the south side of the Danube. Napoleon still hoped to encircle Mack's forces south of the river. He seemed unaware of the possibility that the Austrians could get away on the north bank. That day, Napoleon heard from Ney that only Dupont's division and some cavalry occupied the north bank in force. The French emperor ordered Ney and Marshal Joachim Murat to shift their forces to the north side of the river the next day. Also on the 13th, Salt wiped out General Major Karl Spangen von Eutenesse's brigade in the Battle of Memmingen, capturing 4,600 men at the cost of 16 casualties. Battle. Austrian forces on 13 October when he arrived at Elchingen. Riesch found Loudon sparring with a French force for control of the bridge over the Danube, feeling unable to defeat the French. 
He broke off the fight and merely posted troops to defend the north bank of the river and left the bridge intact with the French in control of the south end of the span. He passively ordered his troops to pitch camp at Elchingen. Kagan proposed that Reich fail to act more aggressively because he had lost faith in Max's ability. Reich and an 8,000-man Austrian corps occupied high ground near the villages of Ober and Unter Elchingen. Deployed on the heights under Loudon and General Major Daniel Mexri were 14 battalions of infantry, 11 squadrons of cavalry, and 12 artillery pieces. The infantry contingent included four battalions each of the Rees Infantry Regiment near 15 and Erbach Infantry Regiment near 42, two battalions of the Archduke Ludwig Infantry Regiment near 8, and the 1st Battalion of the Kaiser Infantry Regiment near 1. The cavalry consisted of six squadrons of the Rosenberg Chevalier Regiment near 6, three squadrons of the Hohenzollern Cuirassier Regiment near 8, and two squadrons of the Archduke Franz Cuirassier Regiment near 2. Alternate Austrian order of battle An alternate order of battle is given by Scott Bowden in his highly detailed account of the battle. In this version Reich has 32 battalions of infantry, 12 and a half squadrons of cavalry and 14 guns served by 450 crew, for nearly 15,000 men. Bowden's order of battle from the Osterreichs Chen Kriegs Archive, Corps, FML Reich 1st Division, GM von Lauden Avantgarde, GM Prinz Coburg Ertz Herzog Ludwig IR No. 8 Hussar Recht Blankenstein No. 6 Center Brigade, GM Geneva Karl Ries IR No. 15 Ertz Herzog Maximilian IR No. 35 Quarassia Recht Hohenzollern No. 8 Ulan and Recht Schwarzenberg No. 2 Reserve Brigade. GM on Frun IR No. 54 Frun IR No. 54 Joseph Coll Order IR No. 57 Quarassia Recht Hohenzollern No. 8 Cavalry Battery Armed with four six-pounder guns and two Howitzers 2nd Division FML von Hessen Homburg Avantgarde GM Mesria Bikaiar No. 42 Quarassia Recht Hertz Herzog Franz No. 2 Center Brigade GM Auersberg Ertz Herzog Karl IR No. 3 Ertz Herzog Auersberg No. 24 Quarassia Recht Hertz Herzog Franz No. 2 Reserve Brigade GM Hermann Frun IR No. 54 Ertz Herzog Karl IR No. 3 Auersberg IR No. 24 Quarassia Recht Hertz Herzog Franz No. 286 Pounder guns, distributed as battalion support to the Auersberg IR No. 24 and Frun IR No. 54. French forces opposing this array, Nice 6th Corps including the 2nd Division of Louis Henry Loison and the 3rd Division under Milher. The force included the Corps Cavalry Division led by August Francois Marie de Colbert Chabanais a reinforced Dragoon Brigade from Borsia's 4th Dragoon Division, plus 28 cannons and howitzers, 6th Corps, Marshal Michel Ney 2nd Division, General of Division Louis Henry Lois and Brigade, General of Brigade Eugene Casimir Villeta 6th Light Infantry Regiment 39th Line Infantry Regiment Brigade, General of Brigade Francois Roguet 69th Line Infantry Regiment 76th Line Infantry Regiment 2nd Division Artillery, 1 Foot Company armed with 3 8-pound cannons and 1 Howitzer 1 Horse Artillery Section armed with 1 4-pound cannon and 1 Howitzer, total 89 men. 3rd Division, General of Division Jean-Pierre Furman Milher Brigade, General of Brigade Pierre-Louis Binet de Marcognet 25th Light Infantry Regiment 27th Line Infantry Regiment Brigade, General of Brigade Mathieu Delabase 50th Line Infantry Regiment 59th Line Infantry Regiment 3rd Division Artillery. One foot company armed with one 12 pound, four 8 pound, and one 4 pound cannons, 65 men, 6th Corps units, Cavalry Brigade, General of Brigade August Francois Marie de Colbert Chabanais, 3rd Hussar Regiment, 10th Chasseurs, a Cheval Regiment, Artillery Reserve, Colonel Jean Nicolas Saru, 1st Rect of Foot Artillery, 2nd Rect of Horse Artillery. 
4th Dragoon Division, Brigade, General of Brigade Jacques Laplancheur, 18th Dragoon Regiment, 19th Dragoon Regiment, 25th Dragoon Regiment. Total French engaged at Elchingen, 6,848 infantry, 1,125 cavalry, 485 artillerymen, 28 guns. French attack Dupont was already north of the Danube with Tilly's horsemen. Ney planned to have Loison's men attack across a partly dismantled bridge directly south of Riche's position. As soon as the bridge was secured, Murat would send of cavalry across to help. Meanwhile, Milher would cross the Danube further east and then sweep west along the north bank. At 8 a.m., Ney sent the elite companies of Villette's brigade across the bridge where they overpowered the bridge guard. French engineers quickly repaired the span so that when Riche sent two battalions to interfere, they were driven back by a growing body of French reinforcements. Villette's brigade assaulted the main Austrian position, supported by Colbert's cavalry and ten cannons. Led personally by Ney, the 6th Light rapidly captured the Elching and Abbey and all of Ober Elching and except the brickworks. The 39th line was driven back by Austrian cavalry, but Loisen brought up Roguet's brigade to help. The 69th line helped roll Riche's men back into the Grosser Forest. Threatened by Milher from the east and Dupont from the northeast, Riche began pulling back. Colonel Charles Comte Lefebvre Desnoetz's 18th Dragoons broke an Austrian square after it was softened up by musketry from the 76th line. Colonel August Jean Gabriel de Corlincourt's 19th Dragoons also joined the pursuit. A final cavalry charge by the Austrians was checked by Roguet's brigade, then countercharged by Colbert's horsemen. Results the French admitted losing 56 officers and 737 men killed or wounded. They captured 4,000 Austrians and four cannon. Austrian killed and wounded may have been as high as 2,000. Riches survivors retreated to Elm where they were trapped with Mack. On 14 October Archduke Ferdinand took flight from the city with a cavalry regiment. At this time, large portions of the Austrian army remained outside Napoleon's net. Mac capitulated with 23,500 troops and 60 cannons in the Battle of Ulm on October 20. In several clashes over the next few days, Murat's pursuit mopped up most of Wernex Gore and other fleeing units. The French clashed with Feld Marshal Lieutenant Prince of Hohenzollern Heckingen's division at Langer now on 16 October. The next day, Murat and Dupont cut General Major Rudolf Sinzendorf's brigade to pieces at Herbrechtingen, capturing 2,500 Austrians. On 18 October, Murat and Ney force Wernick to capitulate with 15,000 soldiers and 28 artillery pieces at Trochtelfingen. Only Archduke Ferdinand, Prince Hohenzollern, Schwarzenberg, Feldmarschall Lieutenant Ignaz Gale and 12 squadrons of cavalry escaped into Bohemia, far to the south. The French eliminated another fragment of the shattered Austrian army when Jelasic surrendered 4,000 men to Marshal Pierre Augereau's 15,000-man 7 corps at Dornburn on 13 November. In 1808 Napoleon bestowed the title, the Duke of Elchingen upon Ney as a reward for his victory.